I love you for showing happy and healthy people. Thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, press that big red subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on this video. Today I'm going to talk about jujitsu and wrestling neck injuries. So if you've been doing jujitsu for a while, more than likely you have suffered a pretty bad neck injury like myself. So I'll talk about myself quickly. I have a bulging disc in my neck, uh, C3 and 4 I believe. I got it as a white belt in my first six months of training. I was wrong with the girl and she had a can opener, which is when I'm in her guard. Uh, she's in my guard and she grabs my neck and yanks really hard. My neck kind of spasmed and I automatically broke into tears. It didn't hurt, but I know that if I start crying, something bad is actually happening because I usually don't cry when I've been hit in the face or something like that because um, I know I'm not really injured. Bad neck injury. I kept training for about a year and a half. My arms kept going numb. There was um, pins and needles constantly through my sleep. I was in a lot of pain in my neck, lots of headaches. My traps got really tight and I got to a point where I decided to go get an MRI to see what's up found out I had a bulging disc. So I've been training now for an extra five years with a neck injury. I did take a pretty much a whole year off in between and just did yoga and weight training to give it a little bit of rest and just did some drilling and watching some videos and some loading on the side just to kind of get rid of the pins and needles so I could function properly and could move my neck because there was a point where I couldn't even do that with my neck. So the year off was a, was a big game changer and I really recommend resting if your neck is really that bad. So five quick tips that I've been doing over the last year to help ease with the neck pain. Number one is regular massages and self-triggering. So you need to find a, I recommend a physio over a massage therapist and especially over a chiropractor because a massage therapist isn't, it's just going to kind of Give you a full body massage, the traps, the shoulders, but if you can get a physio that's really good with necks, they really dig in. My physio goes all the way up into the back of my neck and it even triggers down the front here because as you know in Jiu Jitsu it gets really tight because you're constantly doing this to protect yourself from rear naked chokes. So all this does get really tight and you'll notice if you have a neck injury you have really really tight traps. So I recommend um, either a physio massage therapist or a friend really getting into your traps get your friends to get the elbow, um, get a trigger ball leaned against the wall or one of my personal favorites is have a, bar, a barbell set up on a squat rack, put some weight on it because you're going to lift it up and dig into your shoulder using the barbell or anything you find. If you do have a neck injury already you'll notice everything around your neck will tighten up in order to look after it. So really get a trigger ball in there and loosen up all the upper back, the traps, your chest and your shoulders and make sure you're stretching it regularly. So that comes into my point number two, which is stretching. The best way to stretch your neck is, I'm just going to show you quickly right now, is hand, stand up nice and straight, hand on your head, ear down towards your shoulder, holding that stretch. You might even feel a little bit of a referral pain into your hand. If you are, it could be really tight. After you've held that for about 30 seconds to a minute, slightly look down and then continue that stretch. You don't want to be tilting your whole body. Keep it nice and strict as you're stretching, try and stretch before and after training and as much as possible throughout the day. If you have a computer job, make sure you're doing that as much as you can throughout the day so it's not getting really tight. You can also do that looking down, but looking up, but I find that compresses my spine, so I don't really do that one. Number three is inversions. So you've probably seen this quite a bit in like jujitsu pages saying that you should hang upside down as much as possible. What this does is increases the blood flow into your neck. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I've done it on monkey bars. So find some monkey bars in the gym, hang up upside down. Um, I have an inversion table at my parents' house, so but I don't find the angle is enough because it kind of goes like this. I don't get fully upside down inverted. If you've got it handstands already, try and throw it through wall handstands or headstands if you can just be careful and there's another way to do it is which I do with bands um, I use it for my lower back but I invert myself onto I hang really heavy bands onto a smith machine and I use them to help invert myself anything to get you upside down so when I first injured my neck I hung upside down quite a bit and now not nearly as much as I should but it's a really good thing to get do to get doing it start to really help that inflammation Number four is hot and cold therapy. So a couple ways to do this. Now there's a lot of different science on this, so I'm just gonna say kind of what works for me. If you're going to be moving around your neck, now if you're gonna do jujitsu or you're gonna go do weights, especially in the winter, throw a heat pack on your neck. You wanna make sure your muscles are nice and warm. And then if you're going to be hanging out at home, watching a movie, um, going to bed, throw on an ice pack. There was a period where I slept with a heat pack on my neck for a good few months just to kind of keep it nice and warm, especially in the winter because I woke up with a really stiff and sore neck and sleeping with a heat pack 
on my neck even though halfway through the night and up cuddling it because it was so warm um really helps loosen up in the morning especially if you're going to do and train the next morning so if you're waking up really early or you train late at night i recommend throwing a heat pack on before training on your way there when you're driving put the heat pack on your neck and number five this is a weird one but it worked really well for me is i wore a neck brace around quite a bit my physio recommended wearing it so what happens is when you have a neck brace on it actually pulls up your neck slightly like a neck harness would do and helps kind of separate the discs and allow the blood flow to really get in there decreasing the inflammation so i had um, a pretty thick neck brace i only really wore around at home and if I went to the cinema, I would take it to the cinema with me because my neck hurt way too much to sit and watch a movie. Um, I just have to hold up my head a lot because holding my neck up myself was way too much pain. So it was a couple of times at work I had to wear a neck brace when my neck was really bad. But a neck brace is a really good one to have at home that you can just wear throughout the day and when you're bumming around. It's not very comfortable, but it does release a lot of pressure. So those are my five quick tips on what I do to help with my neck pain. There's things that you should avoid depending on where you're at with your pain, if it's brand new 